perfect love. Perfect love. God's love is perfect. So it's the answer. So that's where we're heading. So you have to receive that love to ever become that love, right? But the goal of the Father isn't just that you be loved by God. It's not just about you being loved by God. It's about you ultimately becoming that love. As He is, so are we. It's the perfection of love. Two becoming one. So the finished work of Christ isn't exalted and fulfilled when a man prays a prayer <gasps> to go to heaven and get his name in a book. Sounds like blasphemy to us in America. That is not the finished work of Christ glorified and exalted. It's when a man's nature is transformed and converted back to love, his original creative value. So the finished work of Christ is fulfilled when a man is born again. And old things pass away and behold, all things are new. That's the fulfillment of the cross of Christ. That's the payoff to the Father. That's the glory of the inheritance in the saints. The deposit of the blood of the Son of God into the earth and the payback dividends and interest of reproduced after His own kind. One seed into the ground, springing up, bearing much fruit. Christians, body of Christ, firstborn among many, predestined to be conformed to His image. So the fulfillment and glorification of the resurrection of Christ is when a man gets converted and transformed back to what he was in the beginning. It's all in the book. It's not about you. God has a great purpose in sending His Son. It's redeeming the value of your life and the destiny and legacy of your life. That's what love does. So love didn't throw you out when you didn't look like a son. Love didn't throw you out and give up on you when you didn't act like you were created to. Love looked way beyond that and said, Forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. Like Jenny and I, we on the break, we talked like when I was talking about that, you're not vulnerable to the world you live in, and there's redemption, we're studying a fallen man, and we're saying this has to be the way it is for me. Uh, menstrual cycles we talked about, we really did, on the break. And, uh, and, uh, and menopause. And see, that becomes scientific, that becomes... That's all of a sudden everybody has to have this and go through this and you're set up, the stage is set for you to go through all that in the world. And wonder if in your precious, I was going to say little woman of God heart, big woman of God heart, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wonder if you just settled that, wait a minute, none of that's my creative value, none of that's in my lineage, none of that's waiting for me, I have no man on earth called no man my father, I, my heritage, my bloodline, my genetics go back to the beginning before man ever ate the tree when father said let us make man in our image, and I don't believe Eve before the tree was destined for all this stuff. This is not my heritage. I'm not going through that. If you're a young lady and every month you've been just struggling bad and it's been your reality, it makes it hard sometimes it seems. But the deal is saying, wait a minute. I don't have to pray my way through this. This isn't even who I am. This is, you didn't make me this way, God. This, this came through the tree. I'm as, if I've never eaten the tree, and there's a place, there's a couple people that I could introduce you to that had babies and didn't feel anything because they believe that oh that's fun for any woman that had a child you would say that would be fun <laughs> I know people personally that had over the years there's so many testimonies terrible menstrual stuff paralyzing crippling stuff and all of a sudden they got a revelation that, wait a minute, this isn't in my, this isn't the order of the day. And all of a sudden they're not even on anything for that. It doesn't even come anymore. In fact, if you be humble right now, and you suffer that way monthly as a woman, stand to your feet. We're just going to establish something right now. Stand to your feet. Don't be embarrassed. That's awesome. Stand to your feet. Be, be bold. It's, see, because it's nothing to be ashamed about. When you stand up, you're saying, hey, this is not who I am. This has been my experience, but you know what? I'm bold enough to stand up and say, wait a minute. There's more to my created value than this. This is not who I am. So it's not about, oh, you're going through that? No. It's about saying, no, today I'm making a declaration that, wait a minute, I wasn't created for this. It's not something I have to contend and cry out and pray and confess over my body. I'm going to stand and affirm that, you know what? This is not who I am. 
I'm going to by faith lay it aside and I'm receiving today a new identity and destiny in this area of my life. Fair enough? So Father, right now I thank you that these women stand and we all thank you, God. That they were not created for pains, cramps, to be capsized, paralyzed, captivated <laughs> once a month and then all of a sudden expect that. I thank you that you created them for your glory. You created them in your image. You created them for your good pleasure. And I thank you these symptoms of mental cycling, cramping, pains, nausea, whatever it might be, bloating, have nothing to do with who they are and who you created them to be. The fact that Eve ever ate that tree, that Adam ever ate that tree, has been made null and void. We stand before you as if we've never eaten the tree. And there's redemption for these ladies. And we speak it over their bodies. And we thank you, Father, right now for the redemption of their being right now. And we thank you and rejoice today that every day for the rest of their life will be different because of your goodness and your grace. And we just thank you that there's an alignment and a normal flow the way Eve was before that tree was ever eaten will be their experience. In Jesus' name, we bless you, ladies. Amen? Amen. Thanks for being humble to stand.